Hi friends, happy Friday. Today I'm gonna do a tutorial on how I created the cover for uh, VHS box or box sleeves um, junk journal series that I will be doing this next week, week and a half. Um, and so these will be for sale in my shop. But since this is sort of a general tutorial on how to prepare any type of junk journal that has a box as its base, cracker box or cereal box or playing card box or anything like that um, with, with a built-in spine already there, I thought I would just go ahead and put this up because it's so flexible and relatable to other types of journals that you can make. Of course, you can do VHS junk journals um, very easily with just the VHS tape sleeves that you have sitting around your house. I actually bought this one at a thrift store, but um, they're a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. So the first thing that I like to do is to clean it with a little baby wipe, just because obviously they've been handled a lot. <clears throat> This just gives you a clean surface to start working with. Um, baby wipes are good because these are actually a little old, so they're actually probably better because they're not super saturated and won't hurt the cardboard at all. They're starting to dry out a little bit, so. Okay, so that's done. The next step is to decide what you're going to line it with. So this is a Care Bear um, children's video. So obviously I looked at it and saw that the main two colors that I could see was purple and yellow and some white. Um, but just because I, li I like to have color, I chose yellow. <laughs> um, a lot of times the VHS boxes will have a cutout here or even here, like a triangle shape. Um, Whatever you choose to line your inside with, make sure that color will also look good in the cutout. So for that reason, I tend to do plain colored cardstock as opposed to pattern, unless it's pattern on both sides that works. Um, so yeah, if I wanted to add pattern, I will do that inside with pockets and you'll see that at the end. So the first thing I like to do is, um, just eyeball to make sure it is even on two sides and then put it into the cutter make sure that it is lined up as best as possible now you will have to trim that is just a given because obviously the geometry of this is when you put, when you line something with another sheet of paper and fold it, you will have some that has to be trimmed off the edges. But this just gives us a basic framework. Hold it steady while you pull this out of the way. Okay, and we do the same thing on the short side. Okay, so now we have a liner that should match very well with a little bit of overlap, which is fine, but wait till the end to trim all of that. Um, so now is the part where you need to make sure that you don't have any bubbles when you glue this down. The best way that I have found to do this, there's lots of different ways to do this, but the easiest way for me is to make sure that it's where it should be and then gently lift it up and mark about where the fold line is on the cardboard. So it looks like here and here. Now I don't have a, let me check this to make sure. Can you see what I'm doing? Um, 
Looks like I may have it a little off. Let me line it up good. Yeah, I need to go a little bit further over. So you'll see here that I'm just matching it up with the natural fold of the edges of the VHS box. Like I said, I don't have a, um, it's not called a punch board. Scoreboard, is that what it's called? I don't have one of those. But if you have a cutter, there's naturally a little score line right here. So, I just line it up with where that score divot is. And um, you can use a bone folder tip, but honestly, this is actually a one of those tools that you use for nails when you want to make polka dots. So I just use this and gently score where I'm going to be folding. Okay, I'm gonna do the same on the other line. Just like that. Now go ahead and fold. It's much easier now that that line, and sometimes it's not straight. <laughs> Uh, now that the line has been created, go ahead and fold it and fold it this way. There we go. Again, this is not an exact science. Um, I prefer to do it this way other than measuring, but you can certainly measure with a ruler to ensure you're getting it to the millimeter. This one looks like it's a little bit bigger, but you know what? Glue will help hold that in, and I feel like if it's a little bit tighter in that space, it will be a sturdier spine. So, for this part, I like to use Fabri-Tac. I just go ahead and... This bottle is getting low. Go ahead and just put it all right here in the spine, all the way to and on the little, where the crease begins. Like that. Then, again, making sure that you are lining it up correctly on the bottom and top so you don't have any um, video box showing through because it's okay if you trim the liner if you really don't want to have to make it so that you have to trim the VHS box because you might cut off part of the image or some of the words at the edge so then just make sure that is secure where it's supposed to be So after doing this step, you will find that gluing the two sides down will be a piece of cake. Let me get an eraser and erase our guide marks. Okay. Yep. So you can see that it is pretty much exactly fitting where it's supposed to. Now for this part, you have two choices. I've done both. It's just a matter of preference. You can use a paintbrush and put Mod Podge on here, or this is tacky glue, um, Eileen's tacky glue. Um, I regret throwing the original bottle away because this little tip makes it come out so slowly. It takes forever. And if you're like me, your thumbs and your fingers start to get angry when you um, squeeze a glue bottle too much. So, trying to, I've got a little clog happening, let me. Okay. Yeah, I need to just pick up a new bottle of Eileen's when I'm at the craft store next because for big, for little tiny projects, um, gluing little tiny things on paper, embellishments, this tip is invaluable. But for 
covering big spaces like this, it is a bit annoying because literally this is all that you're getting out. Get my sleeve out of the way. I would use Fabri-Tac for all of this, but um, it tends, well, obviously, as you know, it is very um, caustic. It's not great to smell for long periods of time, not to mention it's more expensive. So <laughs> if, you're, if you're making a journal that you know needs to hold up to extreme conditions, it will probably hold up better in the long run, but I just don't enjoy smelling that. It gives me a headache. So I use it when I have to, but if I can get away with this kind of glue, I do this. Okay, so now you just simply lay this down. I use a bone folder to smooth it out. Make sure that crease is where it needs to be. Go both ways. Okay, so here, as you can see, it's not perfect. I'm gonna have to trim off a little bit of the box up here as well. And down here on the opposite side, I'm gonna have to trim off this yellow. But for me, it's worth it to do that rather than having to measure just because not every VHS box that I've worked with has been square. And if I, tr if I measure it square, it's not going to fit right. They just tend to, well, just cutting it will make it not square when you cut it apart. But over time, things just shift. And even in factory produ production, things are not always square. If you've ever built a house, you know that as well. <laughs> um, very hard to get everything perfectly square. So I prefer to do the trace and cut method. Not trace, um, line up and cut method. My arm is so sore because I've been doing this for three days now. <sighs> okay. Press it down. This one is wanting to lose its fold, so you just have to gently coax it back where it needs to be. Um, for And then after this part, I've got a little bit of bubble here. After this part, it's generally good to lay it flat and put heavy books on top of it and let it dry for a couple of hours, even overnight. Just because as this dries in open air, these covers might tend to curl inward. So. I do that if I'm doing this in the evening, but for this sake, because I'm doing a tutorial, I will just move on to the next step and trim now. Okay, so get my straight edge metal ruler here. And as you can see, I've got just a tiny little piece of yellow that needs to be taken off. And it makes a fun little paper paper curl. <laughs> okay, so that's that side. This one looks like it's okay until about halfway. So just follow the box. Like I said, it doesn't have to be square. But just follow the way the box is shaped. Bottom edge. All right. Now let's check the inside. We have a little bit here, not bad. Here. 
Okay, let's check everything. Ooh, a little bit here. I'm not a perfectionist, but I just, um, I feel like the front and the back cover are your first impressions when you open a, open a journal. So, uh, I try to make them as perfect as I can. I see a little piece that I just cannot get off. There we go. Okay. So here it is already. You will notice before it even dries that it feels a lot more substantial because this, this was a pretty thin box that I started with. Some of the Polaroid and RCA and, and Kodak ones are not this thin, but this one was a little bit flimsy, but now it is not. Okay, so now before we do our sewing around the outside edge, which I always like to do for most journals, I just feel like it bolsters it um, really well. I'm going to put some pockets and for most video boxes I have found that the same measurement works and that is <clears throat> three and a half inches tall Oops. this is just some paper from a paper pad I found at Michaels Okay, so, and then the pocket needs to be, I'll just double check this because as sure as I say this, this box will be different. Yep, right at four inches. So the, it will be three and a half inches tall by four inches wide. And they're gonna duplicate it for both sides, but it's going to be mirrored. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Now I wanna create a little bit of a, um, angle here. So I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring. Do that. Cut this piece off. Okay, so now you have your pattern and what you're going to do is you're going to flip it to mirror it for the other side. Here we go. Now, this is where if you were making a journal that was um, vintage antiquian, is that the right way to say that? <laughs> you could ink the edges and make it look old, but because these are sort of retro 80s, I'm not going to do that. You would just go ahead and glue these down on two sides, the outside corner sides. This stuff will dry so quickly. sure it lines up on the edges of both. All right, there is one pocket. Did you guys grow up with the Care Bears or did your children? I did. I only had a couple of the stuffed animals, but I had, a, I had several of the little tiny plastic figure ones, and of course, pajamas. I think my pajamas glowed in the dark, which, why don't they make this anymore? And of course, we always went to see the movie, the Care Bears 1 and 2 movies, and at the free summer movies every year. Although now as an adult, when I watch them, I'm like, oh, this is a little dark. It's kind of scary. <laughs> Maybe I was less of a scaredy cat as a kid. Okay. So these are glued down. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to, if you want to, 
um, go around and sew the outside edge with a harmonizing color or a fun thread. Like sometimes I like to use variegated threads that change colors. Those are always cool. Um, they're kind of hard to find, but there are places on Etsy that sell them. Or if you like the how it is, plain, leave it plain. Um, I asked this question on a forum and got some good answers. Some people like to line the edges with washi tape or tiny pieces of paper that you can decoupage or collage around the outside. These are all neat ideas. So I'm gonna pause it and I'm gonna sew it and bring it back and show you what it looks like. I'm back and it is sewn. I ended up choosing a yellow thread and I just used a straight stitch with a spacing of about three. Um, and I sewed all the way around the out, I sewed it this way, so all the way around the outside, securing the pockets down. This little divot right here sewed completely over that and you can do the same if it's right here. Yep, and so now it is ready for adding pages and signatures and a closure if you'd like. But yeah, this is, the basic way that I turn um, VHS sleeves into journal covers. If you really would like to protect it, if it's a super old or rare cover, you could always, before you add the pockets, you could always apply a layer of Mod Podge or something like that, or spray sealer. That would be totally fine. But for this one, I decided to leave it as is. So thank you so much for joining me today. and. I hope that you will be able to turn some of your 80s, 70s, I guess it would be 80s for VHS. I think we got our first VCR in the 81 or 82. Um, but yeah, they're, they're at every thrift store and there's so many cool ones. Not just the one with the movies, but the, the plain covers like this um, for home movies, you know, this this can easily become a really cool journal and I have some of those in the works as well. And you will see all of these in the shop if you'd like to purchase one or after this tutorial, maybe you'd like to make your own. So thanks so much for joining me today. Have a great weekend.